um, today marks exactly four months since I got out of hospital from inguinal hernia surgery. I've had a left inguinal hernia for like 20 years before the operation. So I thought I'll just share my journey. Um, so how did I suffer um, or how did I get inguinal hernia? To be honest, I really don't know and when and how I got it. Um, I lived with it for like 20 years. I only learned that is actually herniation because it kept comes popping out and popping in. So I thought it was nothing abnormal <laughs> for many years until my ex told me that is a uh, hernia. Um, and uh, I really don't like the idea of having operation and um, so I really um, you know, read a lot of um, naturopathic way um, of how to live with it basically um, basically if you have a very good diet and if you you know have regular stores um, then you have a less likely you things pop out and it gets stuck because it's all regularly getting out of the system so that's what I did and it didn't get bigger um, I was managing it very well um, it didn't cause me pain maybe if I did maybe two three times a year that I don't really remember as a vividly but yes if I get kicked in exact area um, if I had a very bad cold or something and I was coughing constantly something like that that's the time I did feel the existence the rest um, the only reason really pushed me to get motivated to have operation was more vanity reason because it can come out at any moment um, of yeah any action and it just like you know I just wanted to wear bikinis doctors understood my profession one is a karate one is a singing I said are you brave enough to take local um, anesthetics you're apparently you have to be reasonably lean to have the only local um, but anyway she, she said you have the option as well as long as you feel okay with it I was studying anatomy uh, and physiology I watched live dissections twice <laughs> before operation I also the day before my operation I watched uh, two live YouTube operation recordings of open um, hernia operation so mentally I said I'm absolutely fine I'm not going to panic uh, I actually am pretty curious what is going to happen to me so yes things I really prepared since I I got the notification that I'm going to have a surgery I think I got maybe three weeks notice um, but even before that, when I made uh, an appointment to see the doctor to say I'm going to have a surgery, um, basically I worked on my core as much as I could because the fitter you are, as the best recovery you'll have. But also after the surgery, I knew that I can't use my core for quite some time. So I did a lot of core exercise and it happened to be COVID time, so I was inside home for eight months, <laughs> pretty much. So I just worked on a core, core, core. I was fittest, um, actually. I did a lot of exercise during the COVID lockdown. So, and I didn't know that I was going to be called for operation since lockdown was over. But um, yeah, I had a flattest tummy and it really, I was yeah in a very good shape to take surgery another thing was that I really made sure that my digestive system was at optimal condition so it is very common to have um, uh, constipation after the operation and for any operation I know that from my family's operations and etc and also other people's yeah um, YouTube videos of inguinal you know, hernia. Um, so yeah, you don't want to put any pressure <laughs> Yeah, with the, the, your digestive system. So 
I ate a lot of fiber. I was drinking green juice every day, pineapple and celery and uh, green leaves like spinach or um, kale, etc. Um, pineapple is known to be anti-inflammatory effect. So I also made digestive in the yeah anti-inflammatory status before the operation. Um, and those are the two things I really worked and I, I was very thankful for it because I didn't suffer any constipation at all after the surgery. And three things I would advise everybody to, well, things I kind of, if I had to have, go back in time, slip, and I would definitely tell myself to um, do before the operation is to wax. Um, I find it waxing here so painful. I've done Brazilian wax one time and I just didn't like it. It's swollen up and etc. And so, but yeah, the doctors shaved it. Um, but as the operation's over and then your hair start growing back, and that's the time the pain or like because it stings. Um, every time it touches the um, undies or even just the like the itchiness growing around the scar is super super uncomfortable and that you really can't touch that area for you know like three months it's just very awkward it was yeah because you cut that through the nerve and there's a lot of the nerve the damage it takes a long time to heal so yeah it, if I were back last year I would start practicing waxing only in the area um well if you if you are okay with waxing entirely then go for it that <laughs> so that you don't want to have wax just before operation if it's red or if it's inflammated they will send you back home because it's just it's it, the risk of complication if there's any pimple they'll send you back home so yeah I would start like waxing practicing the waxing a bit before so and then I would have wax before like a week before the surgery um, I think it would have made my journey a bit easier <laughs> second thing I would do differently was to take the hood with me to the hospital um, because of the COVID I wasn't I had to go to hospital by myself and I didn't know that I could actually ask someone to bring the food to me hospital food was horrific even if you go to a private system they give you a yummy kind of but rich food after the surgery you don't want to have a rich food you want to have like porridge or congee um and like fruits and like what i had was burnt schnitzel burnt <laughs> And the third thing, uh, if I were to go through it again, I would definitely um, find the ways of changing bed linens. Uh, a lot of friends are kind, and so they bring food for you, and then, you know, because you, they know that I can't lift after the operation, you know, they carry things for me. Um, but there, I was also quite unconscious and I sweated a lot um, with the pain while I was sleeping. I slept a lot in the first week and the bed became disgusting, but I was also still quite knocked out, I suppose. But you know, you just can't, you feel too embarrassed to ask your friends to change your bed linen, but you just, it's such a hard labor to do. So if you live alone like myself, uh, that may be something that you could arrange. Okay, the actual surgery. So on the day of surgery, you have to fast. Uh, mine was like 11, so I just were not allowed to drink or um, eat after 7 a.m. So it wasn't too hard and um, it was quite smooth sailing and didn't have to wait too long. Um, uh, just change the gowns and then, as I said, I decided to have open surgery with only local honest anesthetic so I was fully awake I watched open surge open hernia surgery um, just the day before and that morning as well so I had a very clear vision of what is going to happen to my own body and how they're gonna cut and they're gonna stitches and how 
And then, um, so they had a curtains in front of me, so I couldn't see the operation itself. Um, and um, it, yeah, it was just, it stings, pretty much stings. And I was talking to the nurse, making a joke all the time. Uh, is that, like, and she said, oh, is that cut? Or is that a stitch going on? How deep was my hernia? How big is, exactly my oper um, cut was here where I'm showing right now. It's five centimeter in uh, length. And um, it was about, I think, you know, that much she was showing. I don't exactly know if that's accurate, but that was my uh, tear of the hernia. And then five centimeter is just like a double the size of the uh, area. I wanted to touch the mesh, but they forgotten and just threw it away by the time said, so can I touch the mesh? Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I couldn't actually feel the material. Um, yeah, every now and then it's just like, it feels like like sting and it like kicked or burnt, that kind of sensation. But I don't know. I mean, for me, Brazilian wax was a lot more painful. <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm, you know, locally knocked out. So, um, and yeah, being fully aware, and it was freezing, the operation room was freezing. I don't know how doctors actually get through it. Uh, because like, apparently the light is keeping them, like keep them really hot. But I mean, the legs will be so freezing. And then I had like heat sleeping layer thing underneath. So as I went, I was like, start shivering. But then during the operation, I was, yeah, I was warm. Um, then uh, you, get out and go through and then they just monitor me and ask how I feel. I was just hungry. Um, and so the bed was huge. Well, it's Australia, so it's like humongously wide. And so they have this, you know, thing you can you know, automatically lift yourself up um, and the nursing bells and etc. But for me, it was extremely hard because because it was so big, when I lift, I feel like I've got like stuck in the mattress. So as the um, painkiller started to wear out and you started to have a massive, massive pain, it's really massive pain. And you know, and you need to, you feel like you have to go to the toilet quite a lot. And every time going to the toilet, um, it, like you can't push yourself because like, the bed wall is miles away for me anyway. I'm five foot one, 155 centimeter, um, very small. So, you know, with this kind of, uh, it's bigger than, it was definitely bigger than King Single. It was not as big as double, but it's just too big and it, the cushion was too too soft and too deep. So I was, I got stuck um, to even to reach the nurse bells. It's just like, where is it? It's just too far away. Um, so that was very uncomfortable and nurse, nurses were so kind during operation and before operation but post operation, oh my god, I was walking like, like this. Nobody gave me a help. They just watched me, just making sure that I don't fall over, kind of, but good luck to ya, kind of, you know, <laughs> get over it kind of thing. It was just so painful. So. Um, the doctor actually said, you can go home now because you only had a local anesthesia and said, I live by myself. I don't know if it's got, if it's going to happen to me. So anyway, they, yeah, I stayed overnight, but oh my God, in, in certain degree, I regretted it because like no one was just helping me. Walking to the shop was impossible for the first three days I had. I could only do maybe 10 step and I have to rest. Another 30 steps, rest. So it takes ages to go to anywhere. Um, and then also I have to ask my friend to buy me like a really granny Andes just goes from up here to the bottom because normal Andes just, you know, even like I had, I did prepare like pants going through here and here, but it was not loose enough because any, actually not the scar, above the scars that swell up, like, so this is the scar, all this area was so painful. 
so I had icing on like pretty much every day and if something touches it's painful so I had like a metal uh, lid covering the wound and then I just put the ice pack above it and then wear something <laughs> but anything like right like now see like anything like this touches or this touches even if you wear the loosest skirt it touches and I oh, that was so painful So after the surgery, they basically give you a piece of paper and says, um, you know, about four weeks time, you'll get a phone call from a doctor and you have like a video appointment because of the COVID. If it wasn't COVID, yeah, you would go into the hospital. Um, but yeah, it's very kind of very dry. They don't really give you much guidance. You just say, don't lift anything uh, more than five kilo for two months. <laughs> That's pretty much the only guidance I got from the hospital. Um, you know, you just, they didn't warn me anything about the swelling or anything like that. Um, so uh, that kind of thing I have to learn all myself. If I knew all this swelling, um, two things, I advise you get the compression underpants that really like so i did tell doctor after the first month of operation and she said it's really swollen it's very painful and said yeah com wear compression pants i didn't tell me so from the beginning or didn't didn't advise beforehand another thing is to buy something like this which is the um that's probably captured a bit better um it's a micro pore tape to cover the wound. So after the surgery, yeah, after, I can't remember, it's just a week, you can take, take the tape off. You're allowed to have a shower pretty much straight away the next day, but you have to wear the tape and then after a uh, certain duration, I think it was a, a week, but yeah, I'm sure you will be told, um, you can take the tape off. However, you know, it's it just, every time that part touches, it's painful, but also, in order to make the scar as smooth and as less visible as possible, you, I mean, this is the area you, your undies touches all the time. You also, you know, it, it gets squashed and open, squashed, open, squashed all the time. So I learned from my osteo after two months, <laughs> they said, well, how, you know, I don't want to have a big scar here. And they said, yeah, wear my core poor um, uh, tape. Um, and it's yeah it's really helped me and not being you know like clothing not touching and also making the scar smooth another thing I did was also getting the vitamin E oil like um, those it's the scar relieving oil that there are quite a few brands um, that you can buy um, and then I was just oiling it every day so it looks actually my scar looks very smooth it's fourth month so it's obviously it's still very visible on certain day when it's not red it's yeah it looks really invisible um, but yes if you move around it gets red and um, and so yeah I still wear this so that it will have a very smooth surface and eventually it just becomes almost invisible. Surprisingly, I could split my leg sideways without having so much pain. So I could go back to side splits um, within the first two weeks actually but it's more for the vertical movement that was a lot more so side split was easy but more of the vertical split kind of action so it just yeah it's swimming is you know was and you go that kind of action so that that was anything that prolonging this area or the contracting this area that probably is the most uncomfortable thing so you know you kind of modified dog paddle kind of thing um, then you know you check your stamina you check your
pain level, uh, if it's a good pain or bad pain, you listen to yourself, you stop, um, is the walking better? Walking forward was okay, walking backward was quite sensitive to be honest. Um, so you just figure yourself out, so I increased and increased and I think I could start swimming 10 laps, which is one kilometer, um, after, yeah, after a month after the surgery. So I maintained that, just adjust, did walking and swimming so that I could really get my fitness maintained. I look slightly different because I had to teach and go and get trained and get changed, but still the, exactly four months after the surgery today. Um, when I was suffering with a lot of pain, my cats started to have blood in their urine. Um, and they quickly go to the vet and there was nothing wrong with them. They're too young to have like stones and their diet too good. Um, anyway, you know, they had a checkup and there's nothing wrong. Um, it's called a stress reaction. Um, obviously, I was in massive pain and, and that they felt that and they got stressed. It is interesting. So when you are, while you are in massive pain, um, yeah, be mindful of vulnerable ones around you. Um, January said about to a third month, you are not quite ready to put load. So I was putting more load than five kilograms. I mean, like started to carry a bit more than that um, from second month to third month. And I was definitely swimming one kilometer. And it's quite frequently, maybe four times, four to five times a week. And I was keeping a record one or 1.2, or, you know, if I could actually really push myself to go fast um, and uh, but anything to do with uh, leg work like like that kind of uh, load that gives the vibration to my body no um, in a way I was very thankful that this happened in a during the COVID kind of time because nobody gives hug um, because this kind of vibration was absolutely no not for me um even with that a hug and with that shaking hands and everything you know people give that kind of friendly tap it felt so uncomfortable um so i was very very scared um about just about three months i started to put a lot more loads and i felt like i actually need a massage that you know, my muscles were a bit like in shock that I was putting up more lows and needed some massage or treatment that I was really scared to get anything done to me. I started off with like foot massage and um, so nothing to do with lying down and then gradually shifted to acupuncture that just, you know, I lie down on my belly, but you know, no pressing. Uh, from behind um, and then uh, about uh, th third month I started to see physio and osteo, um, osteo and um, you know really wanted to make sure that my recovery and <clears throat> loading was done correctly. So when I started seeing physio I mean, it's interesting. I didn't do so much of leg work during this recovery period. Um, obviously, with the pain, um, this side of sores and the TFL and the cords were quite tight to protect the scar tissues. So he worked on, you know, releasing this area and then so it's avoiding this area directly, but just all the surrounding supporting mechanisms that that was really helping out. I started to see osteo as well and um, and then getting you know my alignments back to normal and then you know boss said I, I'm doing very well and the sky is looking good and about three months and a half they started to give direct massage 
to the actual operated area and making sure around the pubic synthesis area, that's the connective muscles and the tissues attached. Yeah, when I got the massage around there for the first time, I was like, Bleh! really in shock. Um, it's definitely much tighter than before. And, uh, but it's very important that, you know, because when your wounds heal, um, it started to contract and then yes, but if it stays contracted and you don't really stretch the scar tissues, later on if you really do stretch uh, stretch your legs and whatever, um, or whatever the action you take, you can tear the tissues around it. So it's very important that you actually start loosening the actual scar tissues. Um, of the surgery area apparently so I definitely um, started to do it myself and then if I feel a little bit of tingling so right now um, I still do feel the tingling um, but doesn't feel sharp or scary kind of I don't feel that it's a bad pain but just like a tingle and then yeah just I immediately give a stretch um, and I'll make sure that I don't go overboard I don't want to get impact like getting hit um, around this area yet uh, I don't want, and while I was recovering it was interesting I could hit with my right hand so any impact on this side is fine but on this side obviously this shakes a lot so as I said gyakuzuki was hard but just like anything that um, although I'm usually in this stance I started to become a lot more comfortable with right leg forward because um, it lowers on my right leg a lot more than left um, and it doesn't shake this part but obviously when you do that gyakuzuki uh, also this this side gets twisted not this side so although I'm right handed um, this was really not so I became a lot more um, you know um, used to using my right, right leg hold forward which is good because you can be you know you use the opportunity of downtime to improve something that you weren't familiar with so that's um, <laughs> it, I always take things positively and the things that my physio um, gave me as a recovery exercise um, probably about third month was definitely to make sure that my quads and, and sores are not getting too stiff so you can pretty much look up all the quad stretch and sore stretch um, but and also making sure that drawing in and the hip tilt is the starting point so often people who suffer hernia like myself um, tend to push the tummy out as I said at the beginning so basically like a pilates just going absolutely join in and then not push out as you lift the leg up and going down you like i was pretty 90 percent really correct like going drawing in and lifting a leg and bringing it down but at the very peak of it i tend to push so he monitored the way i really join in and the very last minute um, of the you know weight going you really down and lifting all the way up that I'm completely drawing in and just using this kind of action rather than huh, huh, that kind of mm, contraction that way but mm, that way so I am doing all this leg rise and the side so legs reason and moving um, lying on the ground and legs moving side to side so initially I probably should show you so here and then you're gonna go straight down coming back straight down coming back without this is joining and then constantly joining in not uh, but constantly joining in and then just at the very peak of the weight you're making sure it doesn't start uh, that way that way all the time and then also going to the side side and then 
join in so making sure crunch suck into the ground and come back in with the breath etc so that was the um process of strengthening exercise you know side to side was more recent um now that i'm quite okay going that way and then contracting the yeah so all other vertical exercise um um just core slow core movement exercises were given but the yeah last resort was the joining and the contract and moving to side that kind of action um you should really wait until you your information is gone down and you feel that you can go there or just consult physio uh, or doctor who knows um you know athletes and who i go to the physio who deal with ballet dancers a lot and top athletes and so as osteo um my masseurs i go to they treat olympians or tennis players of the top level so they really know athletes rather than just treat people who had this kind of hernia just because they lifted heavy things just because their um, internal walls gone thin and weak and their digestive system is swollen. That kind of cause, um, you know, the, if they're used to only um, this kind of clients, then they only deal with the general public, not the top athletes. And they really don't really know how to bring you up to the level of athleticism and activities that you are after. Um, so they won't give you preparation and, and they don't know how much you expect and you need to perform um, post-surgery. So I would definitely advise for you to, because um, generally um, with the public system, they will just say this kind of surgery doesn't require physiotherapy. Um, you'll be fine by just resting and then taking it easy. And that's how general... Uh, that's a general approach. Yeah? They don't really give you advice to um, go to physio or anything like that unless you go to the private hospital. They may give you a bit. But even so, if you don't, if they don't know um, that you are karateka or you really need to be active and staying fit is an important part of it. But for me, it's my job um, and I use inguinal area a lot as an opera singer. Um, as much as karate car and then I do a lot of other activities. So my expectation um, to myself was the physical ability is a lot higher than general public. So, you know, make sure you find a professional that who, who understands the load you're going to give to your body, how much, it's, you know, you need to go back to where you are um, as safely, as firmly as possible. Because if, if I were just 95 office um kind of job person then i guess i would have said i'm fully recovered after just two months but i'm definitely on a, a journey of recovery to be able to go back to uh what i was doing and then beyond so i want to go i want to exceed um the nuts go four months ago um with you know i didn't have any pain but obviously with the herniation there's some certain things I probably was limited to do so now that I, I fixed that one I'm expecting myself to be able to do a lot of other things that I, I perhaps was holding back to do um so yeah I hope this video helps you to help with the um if you or your loved ones or your close friends are um having inguinal hernia um yeah because i'm sharing the knowledge that i didn't i wasn't given i didn't know and hopefully this gives you a bit more extra uh tips for you to be able to cope and all the best and see you next time us yeah last resort was the joining and the contract and moving to side that kind of action um you should really wait until you, your information is gone down and you feel that you can go there or just consult physio uh, or doctor who knows um, 
you know, athletes. So if you don't, if they don't know um, that you are karateka or you really need to be active and staying fit is an important part of it. But for me, it's my job um, and I use Nguino area a lot as an opera singer, um, as much as karateka and then I do a lot of other activities. So my expectation um, to myself was the physical ability is a lot higher than general public. So, you know, make sure you find a professional that who, who understands the load you want to give to your body, how much, it's, you know, you need to go back to where you are um, as safely, as firmly as possible. Because if, if I were just a 9 to 5 office um, kind of job person, then I guess I would have said I'm fully recovered after just two months. But I'm definitely on a, a journey of recovery to be able to go back to uh, what I was doing and then beyond. So I want to go, I want to exceed um, the Natsuko four months ago.